We've all worked with large and messy data sets in Excel. I'll admit, organizing them can be very tiring. But Excel has a nifty trick up its sleeve, and that is grouped frequency distribution. A grouped frequency distribution organizes large data sets by displaying their frequency in an interval. This will help you interpret the data effectively and identify the trends and anomalies in your data, so you can take informed decisions. Hi there, welcome to Excel Demi, where you can learn to use Excel and solve Excel VBA related problems. I am Ishraq Kader and in today's video we'll be discussing how to create a grouped frequency distribution in Excel. So let's get started. In this video, I'll be showing you three different ways you can create a grouped frequency distribution. For this tutorial, I'll be using Microsoft Excel 365. Consider the list of marks dataset which contains the student names and their marks. We also have the lower limit and upper limit table beside our list of marks dataset. Here we want to create a grouped frequency distribution and show the results in a chart. We'll start with the quickest way to make a grouped frequency distribution. That is by using Excel functions. I'll go to the G5 cell, press equal, type frequency. For the data array argument, I'll select from C5 to C15 range, insert a comma. For the bins array, I'll select from F5 to F10, just before the last upper limit. Now I'll explain this in a moment, but first I'll close the parenthesis and press enter. And we get the frequency for each of the bins. Here the frequency function determines the occurrence of marks in the C5 to C15 range for each of the bins. Now one thing to remember, the frequency function always returns an array with one more item than the limits. This ensures any value greater than the largest upper limit gets automatically included. This explains why my selection did not include the last value of the upper limit. Next, I'll select the frequency column, then go to the insert tab, in the charts group, I'll click insert column or bar chart drop down and I'll select clustered column chart. Next, I'll go to the data section and click select data. This opens up the select data source dialog box. Here, I'll edit the axis labels. So I'll click the button. For the axis label range, I'll click this arrow and select the E5 to F11 range. Click on OK. Then I'll select Series 1 and click on Edit. I'll type in the Series 1 name, Grouped Frequency Distribution. I'll click on OK. I'll click on OK and we can see that our Grouped Frequency Distribution chart is ready. Similarly, we can use the COUNTIFS function to calculate the frequency. I'll go to the G5 cell, press equal, type COUNTIFS. For the criteria range 1, I'll select from C5 to C15 range, which contains the marks. Then I'll press F5 to lock in the row and column references. Insert a comma. For criteria 1 argument, I'll start double quotes, greater than, equal to, close the double quotes, Insert ampersand E5 cell reference, which is the lower limit. Insert comma. For criteria range 2, again I'll select from C5 to C15 range. Press F4 to lock in the reference. Insert comma. For the criteria 2 argument, I'll start double quotes. Less than, equal to, close the double quotes. Insert ampersand F5, which is the upper limit. Close the parenthesis and press enter. We get a frequency of 1. Let's briefly understand how this function works. The COUNTIFS function returns the count of how many times each mark occurs in the corresponding bin. That is within the lower and the upper limit. Next, I'll use the fill handle tool to copy the formula into the cells below. After that, I'll click the insert tab and just like before in the chart section, I'll go to 
insert column or bar chart and select 2D clustered column chart. Again, in the data section, I'll click select data. This opens up the select data source dialog box. I'll click the edit button to edit the axis labels. Again, I'll select from E5 to F11 range and click OK. I'll select series one, click the edit button. Now I'll enter a suitable series name, group, frequency, distribution. Click on OK. Click on OK again, and that completes our grouped frequency distribution chart. In the following sections, we'll use pivot table and Excel add-ins to construct a grouped frequency distribution. Pivot table is a wonderful feature of Excel, and in this method, we'll use it to create a grouped frequency distribution. First, I'll select from B4 to C15 range, then click the Insert tab. In the Table section, I'll click Pivot Table. This opens up the Pivot Table Selection Range dialog box. Since all the default selections look fine, so I'll click OK to proceed. We get a Pivot Table in Worksheet 3. We can see the Pivot Table Fields pane appear on the right. Next, I'll drag the Marks field just under the Rows area. In a similar way, I'll drag the Marks field again under the values area. Now I'll click on sum of marks. In the active field group, I'll click on field settings. This opens up the value field settings dialog box. Here instead of sum, I'll choose count and click on OK. Now we get a count of all the marks. Then I'll select the first value in the row labels. I'll go to the A4 cell. Then I'll right click. In the contextual menu, I'll select group option. This opens up the grouping window. For the starting at value, I'll modify it to 31. And for the ending at value, I'll set it to 100. For the by value, I'll keep it 10 and click on OK. We can see that the row labels are now grouped. Then in the tools group, I'll click on pivot chart. This opens up the insert chart dialog box. Here you can see that Excel has automatically selected the clustered column chart. So I'll click on OK. And finally, we get our grouped frequency distribution chart. Last but not least, Excel has a couple of built-in add-ins that allow us to perform data analysis. We can use the analysis tool pack to create a grouped frequency histogram. First, we have to enable the add-in. So I'll click the file tab at the top left corner. Then I'll click on options. This opens up the Excel Options dialog box. Here, I'll go to the Add-ins section. In the Manage field, I'll click the drop-down and choose Excel Add-ins. Then click on Go. This opens up another Add-ins dialog box. Here, I'll check Analysis Tool Pack and click on OK. After enabling Analysis Tool Pack, I'll go to the Data tab. At the top right corner, we can see Analysis section. I'll click on Data Analysis. This opens up a new window. Here I'll choose Histogram and click on OK. Now we'll have to enter some inputs for the histogram. For the input range, I'll click the arrow and select from C5 to C15 range. For the bin range, in a similar way, I'll click the arrow and select the upper limit in the F5 to F11 range. Lastly, I'll check the Chart Output option and click on OK. Finally, in a new worksheet named Sheet 4, we get our frequency distribution table and a histogram. In this demonstration, I have shown you three useful methods to create a grouped frequency distribution in Excel. You can apply any of these methods according to your requirement and convenience. Don't forget to download the practice workbook from the video description. Try it out for yourself. It's a great way to improve your Excel skills. If this video helped you, give it a thumbs up. If you have any queries, suggestions, or feedback, leave a comment down below. For more information, you can also visit exceldemy.com. Also, to see more helpful content like this, please consider subscribing to our channel. Hope to see you next time. 
बाय